The Pope just concluded a trip to Chile this weekend aimed at healing some of the after effects of sexual abuse committed there. But his remarks during that trip and on his return from it about the role of a bishop in a scandal there have raised questions. Lisa Desjardins looks at the Pope's pledges to change the church's actions and attitude. The cases in Chile date back to the 1980s and a well-connected priest found to be a pedophile, the Reverend Fernando Caradima. Both the Vatican and a Chilean judge concluded those accusations were credible. The church defrocked him. Why this matters now? Caradima was a longtime mentor to a current bishop, Juan Barros Madrid. He is accused of covering up and witnessing the abuse. While in Chile to apologize for abuse by other priests, Pope Francis defended this bishop, saying there is not one shred of evidence against him. That set off a firestorm. The Pope apologized for his wording yesterday, but he also stood by the bishop. Ann Barrett Doyle is the co-director of the watchdog group and website bishopaccountability.org, and she joins me now. First, let's talk about this case in Chile. We have one priest, Fernando Caradima, who was found to commit abuse and also to mentor many other priests who were believed to be abusers. Right. What exactly, though, are the accusations against this bishop, who I know is one of those who this priest mentored? Right. Um, Bishop Barros is said to have, at one point, um, when he was secretary to the Archdiocese of Santiago, he supposedly um, destroyed a letter that complained about Karadima's behavior many decades ago. Um, but, but really, the, the allegations that are far more serious is that the victims of Karadima say that he was in the room when children and young men were being abused by Karadima. Uh, Juan Carlos Cruz, a well-known victim of Karadima, said that uh, Barros then a priest watched him being abused by Karadima. And these are victims that the church itself accepted as credible when they were looking That's at right. Karadima's case. But now it seems the Pope is not giving credibility to these accounts. I'm wondering, what do the Pope's words, someone who I know many Catholics see as a man of healing, what do those words on this trip mean to survivors? How are they taking it? I think the words are devastating to survivors and to Catholics who had thought this pope might be cleaning up the church. Um, I think that the mask has fallen from Pope Francis. I think that this was a tremendous setback to have him resort to the oldest trick in the church's playbook, which is to accuse victims of lying, um, was turning back the clock to the darkest hours of this crisis. This is a cruel tactic that the church, we hoped, had discarded. Um, I, I imagine this is going to have a tremendous chilling effect on victims who were considering coming forward. Um, why would they do that when the head of the global church has accused victims of lying? You know, we reached out to Boston Cardinal Sean O'Malley. He is the Pope's point person and headed up the commission to protect minors, to look into priest abuse. He was not available to come on the show. Uh, but he did indicate, he understood why the Pope's words were seen as painful. We do want to look at some of the things the, the Pope said just in the last day on his plane trip. First, he said, quote, I know how much they suffer to feel that the Pope says, bring me a letter, a proof. It's a slap. That's the Pope recognizing that his initial words were painful when he asked for evidence. But the Pope in that same flight also said, but there is no evidence of abuse, meaning with Bishop Barros. Right. Covering up an abuse is abuse, he said. There is no evidence. There isn't. What do you make of that contradiction? And also, is there some room to say the Pope is assuming that his bishop is innocent before pronouncing him guilty? Well, I think, uh, you know, certainly innocent until proven guilty is uh, a, a concept we all hold dear. And um, But this is different. This is an, an aggressive, affirmative declaration that the bishop is innocent, and it's, and it's an attack on his accusers. That is bias. You know, that is not a disciplined approach to this case. If he were a judge in a civil case, he would be asked to recuse himself or maybe even, you know, thrown off the bench for remarks like that. Mm -hmm. um, 
this this is unfortunately this defense of brother bishops is very consistent with Pope Francis's record when he was an archbishop in Buenos Aires and this dismissiveness towards victims and towards Catholics who complain about Barros and uh, is is consistent with remarks he has made when he's been caught off script um, I think that this is a turning point. I think that this is a, um, you know, a sign that we cannot at all depend upon reform uh, from this pope when it comes to this issue. We will continue to follow this story, and we will continue to ask Cardinal O'Malley to join us for response. Ann Barrett Doyle of BishopAccountability.org, thank you for joining us. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me.